if I've been here um, coming, I'm you know, close to 30 years, and the transformation of this area has, has been immense. Rob Gentilcore is right about that. He's in charge of the Red Path Sugar Plant, a waterfront industrial complex that has outlasted so many others. We'll do anywhere from 27 to 32 um, vessels per year here. Each vessel um, carries uh, roughly 20 to 25,000 uh, metric tons of sugar. This property is typically off limits, but this weekend you'll be able to get a rare peek of what's inside. People will be able to enter the building and see what um, real, true, raw sugar looks like. We will have many tents set up, various baking ceremonies that we will have. Uh, we have a photo booth. We have experts that you know can answer any questions. It's one of 163 sites participating in Doors Open Toronto on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to be taking people into our private event spaces where you can see all those original brickwork, all the original pipes, all the original beams that you wouldn't get to see on a daily basis. Steam Whistle at Roundhouse Park is also joining this year's lineup. It's a historic building built in 1929. People walk by it every day, don't realize what it has to offer. So we want to encourage people to come down, see what it's like, see the gorgeous architecture. In all, there are 50 new spots and many are outside of downtown. In Scarborough, for instance, the Toronto Zoo is opening its Wildlife Health Centre. So in addition to all those new sites, you'll also be able to visit classics such as the top floor observation deck here at Toronto City Hall. There's also a ton of activity happening at City Hall. The mayor's office will be open, the council chambers will be open. We've also got a lot of old favourites including the Ontario Legislature, Osgoode Hall and R.C. Harris Water Filtration Plant, all of which will have some lineups, so definitely get there early. Christine Williamson helps run doors open and for those who have been. It is absolutely a celebration of architecture, but it's really a celebration of Toronto and every single corner. So this festival is great for families, it's great for photographers, it's great for anybody who has an interest in their city. By creating opportunities to access institutions, offices, artistic spots and decades old spaces, the hope is people will take away a greater appreciation of the city. There are so many hidden gems. Our theme this year is hidden histories, so we're really encouraging folks to go try something new, go see a space you've never seen before and I think you will really walk away with a new appreciation of everything that Toronto has to offer. We'll have more on the event at citynews.ca. In Toronto, Nick Westall, City News.